Hello and welcome. I'm Mr. Abbott and today this will be your introduction to poetry. Thank you for picking the poetry track. I hope you guys have fun with this. Uh, I designed this to be kind of a really in-depth look at what poetry is and why it exists. And so I just want to start off with this quote from uh, George Bernard Shaw. He says, the single biggest problem with communication is the illusion that it's taken place. And I want you to think about this quote for a minute. So I'm going to be going back over this. Uh, you may not realize how little is being communicated every time you talk with somebody, but the poet is extremely aware of this. And uh, once again, we'll look at this quote in a minute and talk about why that is a little bit more. Now, in order uh, for you to really understand poetry, there's going to be some concepts I'm going to be going over today. Uh, there's going to be poetry versus its, uh, its opposite prose. Uh, the concepts of lines, stanzas, something that is ineffable. This will be a new uh, vocab word for you. Uh, the concept of communicating information, the concept of communicating experience, subjective, objective, and qualia. These are all terms that will really help you understand what poetry is and why people write it. And so I want to start off with talking about the functions of language. Why do we have language and what does it do? There are essentially two functions of language. And the first and most basic is communicating information. Uh, this is just really just communicating uh, basic facts, uh, statistics, things that people can agree on. Things like what time is it? Where are we going? Who has yesterday's homework? This is really the most basic form of communication. And this is when you learn how to begin speaking. Uh, this is really the first thing you need to focus on, just communicating that information of getting to uh, what you need, right? And so people who are, uh, you know, learning, uh, learning the language as little kids, they learn how to communicate information first. Uh, people who are learning English as a second language, uh, one of the first things they need to know is how to communicate information. And this is really uh, the kind of, um, once you become uh, fluent in English, this is the this is really what you've mastered. You've mastered the ability to communicate information. But that is not the main, it's, it is the main, but I should say it's not the only function of language. And the only reason why you're still in an English class is because there's another function of language, and that is communicating experience. And this is something you can work on your entire life and never really master. This is the reason why you're still in an English class. This is the reason why you have miscommunications. This is the reason why people write poetry and literature and make film. Because this function of language is much more difficult. It's very, very hard to communicate an experience. And so this is uh, going into what is it like to be somebody else? What are other ways of living and thinking? Am I alone or do other people see the world as I do? And so communicating your experiences on the planet is much harder because it's not basic information. It's really complex and really nuanced information. And this really goes into uh, the, the problem of ineffability, right? Experiences are ineffable. And ineffable is this great word that means unable to be uh, described in words, right? I want you to go back and think about a really powerful memory. It could be like, uh, what it was like to have Christmas morning as a child, or like some moment of strong emotion. If you try to get somebody to truly get inside your head at that moment, you're going to find that you're running into feelings and concepts and uh, memories that really you're like, I have no idea how to describe that. Because experiences are what are called ineffable. And so you really can't describe it in words, or it's really hard to fully describe it in words. And this is why the the function of language where you're you're communicating experience is so difficult and takes a lifetime to develop uh you know i am better at communicating my experiences now than i was when i was 20. Uh, i'm sure i will be better at communicating my experiences when i'm 50 than i am now uh, and so as you go through life you become better at communicating your experiences but everybody is still learning nobody ever really masters this all the way um, if they did, then they would be able to truly put somebody in their head. Um, and it, it, it's, it's one of the limitations of just living. We never really get all the way there. Uh, and so I want you to think about communicating experience. 
think about this, 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 this woman standing on the bridge here, and then the person who's taking this photograph. You know, what are, what are some of the parts of an experience, right? The position where you're standing, the internal thoughts that you're having, uh, your senses, sight, sound, touch, taste, smell subconscious thoughts. And so if you think about this picture here, you have this, uh, looks like a woman here and uh, a photographer, right? They're both looking at the same thing. They're both looking at the same vista. But if you were to get inside both of their heads, I think you would find that they're both having very different experiences. First off, because they're in different positions. The photographer actually has the woman in his sights, whereas it's not the same vice versa. The woman is looking over the balcony, right? Um, what's going on inside their heads are slightly different, right? This woman could be thinking about uh, some hardship she was going through that the person who's photographing is not, or maybe vice versa, the photographer is thinking about something difficult or um, thought provoking that the woman is not, right? Uh, the senses, sight, sound, touch, taste, smell. It looks like the photographer is in the shade while the woman is in the sunlight. That can be a slight difference in uh, the difference of communicating. And so, it could also be just subconscious thoughts. These are thoughts that aren't really all the way in your head, but are just like under the surface and they're influencing how you feel. And so they might be in completely different moods as this. And so while they're both looking at the same thing and technically doing the same thing, they are having radically different experiences at the same time. And so if they were to come together and try to communicate what it was like for them to be there in that moment, I think what you'd find is that they're having two different experiences, but neither of them would ever fully understand what it was like to be the other person at that moment. And so what this comes down to is subjective versus objective experience, right? And so objective experience, you know, it's just the facts. It's, it's what the experience was. And so that woman and that photographer in the previous photo, they were having the same objective experience. They were standing in a place on earth at a certain time, looking in a certain direction. Objectively, that's the same experience. But their subjective experience, what the experience was like for them, was slightly different, right? Because they have different thoughts, different feelings. They're in different locations in time, right? Uh, and so what they are actually experiencing is slightly different um, from each other. And so we, everybody has objective experience in every, and, and subjective experience. The objective experience is just, this happened at this time. And the subjective experience was like, this is what it was like to be in your head. And so when you're communicating experience, typically what you're trying to do is communicate the subjective experience. Yeah, it's pretty easy to communicate objective experience because that's communicating information. That's not communicating really the experience itself because what is uh, experience is what it's like through our eyes. And so this goes into a concept I want to introduce. And so there's this philosophical concept called qualia. And it expresses the uniqueness of somebody's experience. And so qualia describes what things are like for you. And your qualia is going to be different than somebody else's qualia, right? And so what is it like to taste chocolate to you? You could take a bar of chocolate and put it in your mouth and have a slightly different experience as somebody else who takes that same bar of chocolate and puts it in their mouth, right? I'm sure you've met people who are like, oh man, I hate chocolate. They're, just, uh, they're rare, but occasionally you do meet them. Or they don't really care for it, but you love it. And you're just, you're tasting it like, this is the most amazing thing ever. Uh, while, while they're like, yeah, I could take it or leave it. Uh, you both have very different uh, experiences. And this is your qualia, right? Uh, this is your personal tailored experience to what things are like, right? What is it like for you to stand in the sunlight, smell an orange, watch a sunset? And so these unique experiences are your qualia and no two people have the same qualia, right? And when you're trying to communicate experience, what you're really trying to do is communicate your qualia to somebody else. Uh, and so that's why it's so different. If you if somebody truly understands your qualia, then they would really, really actually understand what it's like to be you. Uh, but you can never quite get them all the way there. Like, this is what it's like to be you. And like, the better you are at community experiences, the closer you get. But there's always going to be a little gap. You can never quite get them all the way to what it would be like. And so going back to this quote by George Bernard Shaw, it says, the single biggest problem in communication is the illusion that is taking place. 
And so hopefully this makes sense to you more because we talk to each other and we assume when we say something that we're passing on our subjective experience. We assume that we're passing on our qualia and we assume that the other person is taking that information and processed it in the same way we have. But that's not true. Instead, we say something and it gets filtered through their qualia, which is different. It gets filtered through their subjective experience, which is different. And so we think we've communicated something to them, but really we've communicated something that looks like it to them. It's never really a perfect copy. And so George Bernard Shaw is pointing this out. He's saying, this is a problem. We all assume that when we're communicating with somebody that the communication has gone through. It's, it's just kind of the way that uh, a conversation works. And we make these assumptions that, they, that that communication has been achieved. But if you really, really look at communication, you find that that is not true. And so it's just an illusion that communication is taking place. And so it really should just be perfect communication is taking place. And so really uh, the single biggest problem in communication is the illusion that perfect communication is taking place. Really what is taking place is imperfect communication. Now, what does this have to do with poetry? Poetry is an attempt to go to war on miscommunication. This is really what it is. I don't want you to think that poetry is about writing flowery language or this uh, sappy love poems. Really what poetry is, is an all out battle on miscommunication. Poets try to expand what communication is capable of. And so it tries to push past the limits of communication to express those ineffable experiences. It's saying, I know that it's gonna be nearly impossible for somebody to see what it was like to be me at that moment, but I'm gonna try anyway, and I'm gonna use every tool at my disposal. Poets acknowledge that each person has a unique quality, but they try to share their experience anyway. Uh, they use any technique that will help them communicate their experience. If it's breaking grammar, they will do it. If it's using unusual words, they will do it. If it's using words in a different way than what they, people would experience, they will do it. They will use anything they can to try and uh, uh, communicate their experience. And they will really break any rules, right? And so that's how I want you to think about poetry. It's a war on miscommunication. It's saying, I'm going to find a way to share my experience regardless. Now, oftentimes in poetry, that experience is what it's like to be in love with somebody, right? That experience is what it feels like to be around somebody else or what it feels like to look at something beautiful. Uh, and so that's where we get love poetry. That's where we get those flowery language, but that's not, that's just one part of poetry. It's any attempt to go to war on miscommunication and say, this is what it was really like for me to look at that flower. That was what it was really like for me to be in that relationship with this person, right? Uh, and so, but it can be anything. It, it, like, what is it like for me to sit in Mr. Abbott's class watching a video about poetry and communication? What is it like for me to uh, go to school and feel like nobody sees me, right? What is it like to you? What is it your unique perception, right? And you don't want somebody to feel, you know, you don't want to describe your experiences and then have them see it their way, right? Because what it's like to be alone might feel different to somebody else. What it's like to sit in this uh, class and watch this video might feel different to somebody else. You want them to understand your experience and that poetry is saying, I'm going to find a way to do this. And so really, if you really wanna summarize what poetry is, it's what does the world look like through your eyes? What does the world look like through your eyes? How do you experience things? This is what poetry is really trying to get to. And this is why some people really get into poetry, because it's really attempt to be understood, because everybody essentially wants to understand. They want other people to understand their experience. They want to be seen. They want to be heard. And their poetry is their attempt to be heard, to be seen, to use their language to the fullest extent to create a record of what it was like to be them at that moment. And to get somebody to say, yes, I see you. I see your experience and I understand it. Um, and that's why people like reading poetry as well. Sometimes they'll see somebody else's experience and say, oh, I didn't know. I didn't know somebody else had this experience. Um, and this is really what poetry is about.
And so I want you to think about this, this little thought experiment here below. I have uh, this picture of what is a, uh, a radio tower. I know this is a little bit outdated technology. You can think about this as maybe a Wi-Fi hotspot and a cell phone instead of a radio tower and a radio. Uh, but in what way might the poet and the reader be similar to the picture below? I want you to think, how is a poet and a reader like a radio and a radio tower or uh, um, a... Uh, a smartphone in a, in a Wi-Fi hotspot. Take a minute and think about that. Pause the video if you need to. Okay, welcome back if you paused your video. Otherwise, you're just going to see me talking straight through this whole thing, and you're going to be like, wow, I didn't have time to think. Anyway, uh, if you think about it, when you're driving in the car, there's radio signals all around you, right, at all times. Uh, the only way you actually tap into those radio signals is if you have uh, your radio tuned to the correct frequency. And so in this way, a poet is like the radio signal. There's there's people all over the world. They're putting out their poetry saying, hey, here are my experiences, here are my experiences, here are my experiences. Um, but you might you might have your radio on, right? Uh, but you're not you're not hearing that experience because you're not tuned to the right station. And so what will happen sometimes is you will you will read a poem and you're like, I really have no idea what this person is talking about. And what's, what's happening is you're not tuned to the same frequency. Something in your life is not giving you the tools to understand that poet's subjective experience. You, you can't quite relate to that poet's qualia. Or that poet is just not doing a, a job that allows them to communicate that appropriately. For some reason, there's a disconnect between the reader and the poet. And you might find this. As you get older, you're going to find that you understand more and more poems as your wealth of life experience increases. Um, it's just what happens. The more things that happen to you, the more you understand uh, what other people are saying about their lives. And so I want you to think about this when you're reading and you're writing poetry. Just because you wrote something, and it might be excellent, it might be well written, it doesn't mean people are going to be able to tune into it. Uh, you, you really need to find somebody who has kind of a similar experience to you. And so really, this is another aspect of that qualia that I was mentioning earlier, that subjective experience. You want to use other people's qualia, their subjective experience, to get closer. They need to have some kind of point of reference. And so you're, you're using what they know to help them understand you and what it's like to be you. And so... Let's get into the nitty gritty here. Um, there's two terms I need you to understand if you're going to be writing poetry. Uh, there's prose, which is all forms of writing that are not poetry. So pretty much anything you see that's not poetry is this term prose. Uh, and so poetry is really a form of writer writing that says more and says it more intensely than other writing, right? Uh, poetry is like, um, is like uh, I'll show you in a minute. I have a good metaphor for this. Um, but it, just remember that term, a uh, form of writing that says more and says it more intensely. Than that, right? And so prose is things like newspapers, novels, magazines, everyday speech, web articles, instructions. And so here I have an, uh, an article about uh, bald eagles in the United States. Uh, it's written in prose. Uh, it's very factual information. Um, it's uh, talking about how uh, the population has increased. And so it's organized in the sentences, and those sentences are organized in paragraphs, right? But if we turn this into poetry, it looks a little bit different. Poetry is typically uh, forms such as poems, songs, in some place. Yes, music is typically poetry. And so here uh, we have the eagle. Once again, it's talking about an eagle. He says, he clasped the crab with, crag with crooked hands, close to sun in lonely lands. Ringed with, azure, ringed with the azure world he stands. The wrinkled sea beneath him crawls. He watches from his mountain walls, and like a thunderbolt, he falls, right? And so you'll see there's different things going on there. Uh, first, it's organized into lines, not sentences. Uh, there's these line breaks at the end, uh, and so that's to change the rhythm. Um, the author is not necessarily using grammatic um, language. Uh, it typically tends to... It, can rhyme, it can play around with sound, and is organized into stanzas, right? And so here the author is trying to communi com communicate an experience of, you know, how he felt thinking about an eagle or watching an eagle uh, die from a cliff, right? And so going back to that uh, poetry 
says more and says it more intensely. In prose, you're having a message and you're putting it into a larger vessel, like a bottle, right? And so prose is like this big bottle here. You're fit, you have a lot of room. You can fit the message in there um, in, in kind of a full form. Whereas poetry, you're trying to condense that message into a smaller bottle. Uh, and so poetry says more and says it more intensely than other writing. It's really trying to get a message into a smaller vessel um, so it can be understood more quickly and more intensely. And so typically uh, poetry will require more than one reading. And so here's a little um, list of things that are different between prose and poetry. So prose usually does not pay attention to rhyme or rhythm. Poetry does pay attention to rhyme or rhythm. It doesn't mean it has rhyme or rhythm, but if it doesn't, it's because it, the author chose not to put it in there. Um, Prose, the writer usually has no word limit. Uh, poets try to use a limited number of words. They're not trying to keep writing and writing. They want it to be small and condensed. Um, in prose, ideas are written into sentences. Sentences are grouped into paragraphs. Uh, in pro poetry, I, uh, ideas are written in lines and grouped into stanzas. Uh, prose, the language is more natural and grammatical, whereas poetry, the language is figurative and rhythmical. And uh, prose, usually you can understand it in one. You can read it one time and be like, okay, I know what's going on. There. Poetry may require more than one reading uh, in order to interpret it because it is so dense. Uh, there will be things you notice every single time. And so here are some uh, essential uh, poetry terms that I want you to just know right off the bat. A uh, line and stanza. And so a line is a basic use, uh, unit of poetry. So here's a line. I like a look of agony. Now, you notice that's not the end of the sentence. In prose, it would just keep writing until it hits the end of the page. But in poetry, they break it into lines in order to show like a basic unit of understanding. It, it wants it to be like that line communicates one thing. And then when they're ready to communicate to another thing, they go to the next line. And so all the author wants you to understand from this line is that they like a look of agony, right? That's it. Um, you'll notice that agony is capitalized, right? That's not proper grammar, but it, the author capitalized it. Um, and so that's one line of poetry. And then these lines get grouped into what are called stanzas. It's like a poem paragraph. And so line and stanza. Line is a basic line of poetry, and stanza is uh, a group of lines. And so these are two things that you really want to understand. And I'm going to be using them going forward. Uh, to describe poetry. And really, that's, that's, that's the only thing that makes a poem a poem, right? Now, good poetry and bad poetry are two different things, but, you know, uh, essentially, if it's broken into lines and stanzas, it is a poem. And so I want you to review some of the essential lesson concepts here and make sure that you have got them all. Do you know what poetry is versus prose? Uh, do you know what a line in a stanza is? Do you know what it means when I say experience is ineffable? Uh, do you know the difference between communicating information and communicating experience? Uh, do you get that concept of subjective and objective experience and the concept of qualia? And this one's difficult. I won't blame you if you don't get qualia right off the bat. But um, these are all things that you want to make sure you understand before moving on because these are things that are going to be really essential in understanding why you're writing poetry, what poetry is, and whether or not you're achieving your goals with poetry. And so let's take a minute and let's check out uh, the practice assignment to help you uh, go through some of these concepts. Hello and welcome to your introduction to poetry assignment here. Uh, so really um, what this assignment is going to be doing is just to begin to expand your skill in poetry writing. Um, I want you to understand what poetry is and why people write it. And so we're going to attempt to help you see where poetry sits in your toolkit of communication, right? And so the whole point of this assignment is going to be to explore a memory and see if you can communicate that memory, that subjective uh, version of memory through a poem, right? And so you're not just trying to communicate the objective experience of where and when it took place. You want to try and communicate what it was like to be you in that moment. So I have kind of a, uh, 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 you know, a process for helping you uh, try to do this. So check Google Classroom for when this is due. This is going to be project one. Uh, 
And so you're going to go down here, and I have an example of me doing this. Uh, if you scroll past that, you'll see down here I have a worksheet for you to fill out where you can uh, work through the process as well, right? And so starting up at the top, uh, the first thing I just want you to do is I want you to think of a moment in, in your life that was important to you somehow. Give it a title, right? What is the general memory you're going to describe? And so this is just deciding, okay, I want to talk about this today. And so for me, I just said uh, my first bus ride when I was living in South Korea. Right? And so I, I now have the memory that I want to, um, to communicate. You know, and you could just be like, what was the memory of me sitting in class the first day of school or whatever? It doesn't have to be anything uh, intensely personal. Uh, in fact, I am going to be reading these. So if you don't want to have that memory shared with me for some reason, please do not write about it, right? Uh, write about something you feel uh, comfortable with. Now, once you have that memory in your mind, you want to start uh, coming up with some of the things that were unique to you in that memory. So like the images that you saw, what did you see when you were in that moment? Uh, what were some of the other sensations? That could be sights and sounds, uh, uh, tastes, smells. Maybe you're eating something. Maybe you smelled something weird. Or, uh, you know, uh, it could be a feeling. Uh, perhaps it was extremely cold. Uh, what other sensations were there? Um, what memories were going through your head as you were experiencing that? Like when I was driving through uh, uh, Korea, I saw all these like neon crosses. Um, between the hillsides, it was mostly dark. I got there at night and I kept thinking like, this looks like something out of an anime, right? Um, like Trigun or something. Um, and then uh, emotions, what were you feeling uh, emotionally at that time? These are all part of the qualia of your experience, right? And so remember, when we're writing our poetry, we want to show somebody what our unique version of this experience was, what, what our true qualia was like our subjective experience of that moment. Now we want to communicate that. This is all part of communicating experience. And so this is just brainstorming what some of the aspects of your um, uh, unique experience were. And then once you have that, I want you to kind of think of, well, even if I were to describe all that, what would still be missing? Um, you know, and I said, there are really just too many memories and hopes uh, that were in that moment to communicate effectively. If I were to try to communicate everything that were in that moment uh, in a poem, the poem would be really long. And, uh, you know, here's, here's really kind of the thing I think about, right? In order for you to communicate a moment in time, right, you just want to know, uh, communicate what it was like for somebody to be you at this one particular moment, right? And if it becomes too long, it's hard, it's hard to, you know, you want the poem to mirror the, the shortness of the moment, right? Or the length of the moment. And if the poem is longer than the moment was, immediately you're not communicating uh, that yourself fully, right? I don't know if that makes complete sense to you, but hopefully it does. And so, anyway, moving on. Uh, the first thing I want you to do is I want you to just try writing a brief story of now, this is writing in prose, not in poetry. Um, just write a story uh, that describes what it was like to be in that moment. So I wrote this story about uh, me riding on the bus and seeing uh, one of the towns as I drove by and bright red crosses, um, uh, neon crosses and things like that in that moment. You can see it's not too long. Um, and then uh, now try to turn the whole thing into a poem right, uh, that focuses on uh, what it was like to be you in that moment. Now, uh, you can use words, you can use phrases from your uh, narrative, but that doesn't mean you should copy the narrative and then just put it into lines and stanzas, because that's not really what I want. Um, so the poem I ended up writing was this, uh, black rolling hills, matte velvet under the diffused glowing sky. Each mile took me further from my home, further into the unknown. Hills descended to a vista of red neon crosses levitating over a sea of lights. Hills rose again, cradling the bus in darkness. Overhead lights, a pearlescent sheen on the window obscuring the world around me. Unable to see what is coming, I sit back and wait, traveling into uncertainty. And so I'm just trying to, you know, describe this moment when, uh, 
I was on my way to go teach in Korea and I'm just looking out the window of the bus. And one of the first things I see uh, in Korea after traveling through darkness is this quick view of a city uh, and the city lights and the red neon cl- crosses floating over the city before uh, immediately almost it disappears uh, behind another hill, right? And so that was my intent. The extent to which I was successful in doing that you know, I'm sure you can tell yourself, you'd be like, Mr. Abbott, I didn't get any of that, which is fine. I mean, this is this is why I start off with that quote, like uh, that uh, communication is typically, uh, it's it's an illusion that has taken place. We think that we're communicating something we're off, but we don't. And so really that's what I want to see. I want to see you kind of take a moment uh, from your life, break it down, um, think about what would be missing, write a story, and then turn that story into a And so I want you to try and uh, follow this process to start uh, thinking about poetry and thinking about how it communicates uh, uh, experience. Uh, Once again, uh, if you have any questions on this video, please make sure you ask me in class. Uh, Typically, uh, I prefer that you ask questions after you watch the video. Please don't ask me questions instead of watching the video. I really don't appreciate that. Um, But I look forward to reading what poems you come up with. And uh, hopefully you guys enjoy doing this.